Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today, we're taking a closer look at NVIDIA's DLSS upscaling technology when utilized on a 1080p display. This is something that we've largely skipped over when discussing the quality of various upscaling solutions, commonly focusing on higher resolutions instead, like 1440p and 4K. But 1080p is still a relevant resolution in 2024, so it's important to take a proper look at how upscaling works here. The simple reality is that many gamers are still rocking a 1080p display. They're affordable, they're widespread, and the resolution isn't too demanding for those with entry-level hardware. While higher resolution monitors are becoming more popular, and we'd generally recommend them instead, 1080p is still by far the resolution with the most usage share among PC gamers. The issue when testing upscaling technologies is that the results seen at higher resolutions don't apply to lower resolutions. A game and technique that looks great at 4K may not deliver the same results at 1080p because the output resolution is lower and the render resolution used is also lower, leading to fewer samples being input into the upscaling algorithm. This means the conclusions you draw about DLSS running at 4K on an RTX 4090 may not apply to the gamer with an RTX 4060 playing at 1080p. I've got a 10 game comparison for you today looking specifically at DLSS, largely focused on the DLSS quality mode at 1080p versus native resolution rendering using TAA. In a follow-up video, I'll also be adding FSR and XCSS to the mix, so stay tuned for that. Without further ado, let's get into the quality testing. First up, we have Cyberpunk 2077, a game that is currently using DLSS 3.5.10 for its upscaling. In all of these comparisons, I've tried to match sharpening between techniques in static shots, but this is a bit tricky. I've also disabled motion blur in most circumstances. There are a few immediately obvious issues when using DLSS quality instead of native TAA at 1080p. The first is ghosting. While driving this car, I spotted obvious taillight ghosting in this scene that you don't get in the native image. Depending on the exact part of the scene, the amount of ghosting can be quite distracting and looks pretty bad. Interestingly, when running this exact same pass using DLSS quality at 4K instead, you get virtually no ghosting, an example of how the higher resolution delivers much better upscaled results. It was also fairly evident that the DLSS quality image is blurrier. This is especially noticeable on the road textures near the car and the car itself. Stationary, these elements look pretty similar between DLSS and native. In motion, there is a clear reduction in detail and sharpness on the DLSS side. In case YouTube compression destroys this detail, let's slow the footage right down so you can see the difference, which is pretty obvious in real time by the way. When viewing the road further from the vehicle, there isn't a huge difference between DLSS and native, but anything in the foreground is significantly clearer when viewing the native image. It's this part of the scene that moves the fastest that DLSS has the biggest issue with. As for image stability, it really depends where you look as to whether DLSS or native rendering is superior. This utility pole appears a bit less stable in the DLSS image, but at times other elements look better in the DLSS image. Here's another scene from Cyberpunk. What's interesting about this one is there are clear differences even when stationary. The native image struggles with the transparent green element and the distant spires on the buildings. The DLSS quality image struggles with the grates on the building and the streetlights. In motion, it's fairly similar to the previous comparison we looked at, where the native image has higher detail and appears sharper. Again, it depends on exactly where you look, but to me, the native image also had fewer artifacts and less ghosting in motion, making it the better way to play this game when not factoring in performance. Quite a different game to Cyberpunk is Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, which uses DLSS 3.5.0. Here's the main things I noticed between native and DLSS. In motion, there's more artifacts around Ratchet's shoes with the native presentation, However, native preserves more fur detail. In this opening scene, the DLSS image had some moiré pattern effects on the red carpet, as well as less stability in the grass. However, the DLSS image was clearly superior at reconstructing the transparent elements on the podium while Ratchet is moving. Unlike in Cyberpunk, I felt that in this game, there wasn't a noticeable loss of detail and blurry appearance to the image when using DLSS in the quality mode. Artifacts can trade blows between DLSS and native depending on where you look, but generally I felt the level of artifacting was less noticeable in the DLSS image, so that's a great result for upscaling at 1080p. I don't think I would go to the length of saying that DLSS in this title is better than native, but it's in the ballpark of being equivalent in image quality, so for most gamers it would be the preferable way to play. Dead Space is currently using an older version of DLSS, version 2.5.0. This title has issues with DLSS ghosting at 1080p around the character model in motion, particularly in darker environments, which is most of the game. 
The suit itself is that little bit sharper and more detailed in the native image, and around the arms and weapon there's noticeably less artifacting. DLSS quality mode also typically produced the softer image, for example in this scene even when stationary, native 1080p had greater detail, and this continued in motion where DLSS was anywhere from a bit soft to quite blurry. This is despite Dead Space typically being a slower paced game, just moving around levels in real time I thought it was pretty easy to tell that DLSS was rendering at a lower resolution. However, there is one thing that DLSS is very good at, and that is reconstructing text on some of the translucent holograms floating above doors. While not rendering at an especially high resolution, DLSS was able to produce clearer and readable text at a smaller size on screen relative to native rendering. Typically this meant I could read a sign above a door from further away, but interestingly when you're much closer to some of these signs, the DLSS image can be slightly less detailed, at times a bit blurry, and is prone to moiré artifacts as these holograms can have detailed repeating patterns. Spider-Man Miles Morales isn't as soft or blurry as Dead Space or Cyberpunk 2077, generally reproducing a similar level of detail whether you're using DLSS quality or native 1080p rendering using TAA. There's a decent amount of sharpening adjustability here with various sliders, but this isn't the only aspect that allows the Miles Morales presentation to look decent, it's also the actual level of detail that's being upscaled correctly. However, the trade-off in this game is that DLSS quality at 1080p has noticeably more artifacts in motion. During this opening cutscene example, the major issues are the reconstruction of hair and fur, which sizzles more in the DLSS image, whereas native 1080p looks comparatively stable. Unlike other previous titles, fine texture details are prone to moiré effects, even when using the highest DLSS upscaled quality setting. I also noticed throughout gameplay that DLSS has more disocclusion artifacts around foliage in particular, so you see that unstable flicker-like effect as you move and look at trees, especially those without leaves. That's not to say the native image is perfectly stable though, there are similar issues seen using TA at times, and even some circumstances where the DLSS image is more stable, but generally in this title my preferred way to play visually was native rendering. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 is an example where DLSS quality at 1080p looks worse than native rendering, but not so bad that it's unusable during general gameplay. DLSS at this resolution does produce more artifacts compared to native, however if you're just focused on gameplay the artifacts aren't distracting to the point where you can't target enemies or the game becomes unpleasant to play. The main issue with DLSS in this game is stability. With sharpening set to 50 matched in the native mode, detail isn't too bad and the presentation isn't that blurry. The trade-off is sizzling around high contrast edges in motion, a bit of ghosting, flicker and jaggies. Elements like wires, foliage, windows, bench tops all appear to be rendered at a lower resolution when DLSS is used, so the game does feel a bit like the resolution is decreased somewhat when playing with the DLSS quality mode. As I said though, it's pretty tricky to spot this during fast paced gameplay, and it's not like a cyberpunk situation where you can be driving a car and that car takes up a bit of the screen at all times, and it's obvious the quality of that element is reduced. Your gun in Modern Warfare 3 doesn't look too bad with DLSS enabled, and the little artifacts you see here and there just add up to a general feel that the game is running at a lower resolution without being a deal breaker. Star Wars Jedi Survivor is a game that looks awful at 1080p. It looks awful using native TAA, and it looks awful using DLSS quality. I'm not sure what it is about this specific game that just doesn't play nicely with the 1080p resolution, but seriously the game really doesn't look very good here at all, and benefits significantly from a higher output resolution. The issue with native rendering is a soft presentation, ghosting, and some sizzling artifacts in motion. Jedi Survivor is very blurry using native TAA at 1080p, a truly awful implementation of the technology. Then when enabling DLSS, the game is a little crisper, but quite a few artifacts are introduced in motion, more sizzling around grass, and a few more disocclusion artifacts. And when I say a bit crisper, I only mean slightly, it's still pretty blurry for a 1080p game compared to some of the others I've tested here, and I triple checked this result to make sure it was actually outputting at 1080p and not some lower resolution. In Hogwarts Legacy, there's not a lot separating DLSS quality and native TAA at 1080p. In both configurations, the game is quite soft and lacks detail, though not nearly to the degree of Jedi Survivor. It appears to be another game that is primarily designed to be played at higher resolutions, as not much tuning has been done for 1080p. With that said, I found that the DLSS image was more stable in some minor areas, for example disocclusion artifacts when the background is foliage, so in general I would give a small edge to DLSS quality mode here for overall image quality, though it was pretty difficult in general to spot a difference while playing the game. 
I would personally choose to play at a high level of sharpness, though this footage has been sharpness matched. Starfield is a pretty typical example of the differences between native rendering and DLSS quality at 1080p. Take the entrance to Neon. When stationary, DLSS quality appears to reconstruct more detail in the sign, but as soon as you start moving, the sign flickers badly and becomes a distraction in its quest to produce greater levels of detail. At a higher output resolution, this goal largely succeeds, but not at 1080p, where the render resolution is close to 720p. As we move through the entrance, which has lots of wire and mesh detail, the native presentation looks sharper and clearer, with fewer artifacts, particularly on those side meshes. I also noticed that reflections and shadows were higher detail at times, though this wasn't always the case and could be to do with level of detail configurations between native and DLSS, but the general level of detail and softness is similar in motion. It doesn't appear as though we're getting a cyberpunk-like penalty when moving around and using DLSS upscaling. Nevertheless, in this title I feel it's hard to say that DLSS quality is producing image quality on the level of native rendering and I would prefer to play the game at native 1080p. Unfortunately, Starfield is still a title that requires a lot of performance to play at high quality settings, so that isn't always achievable on entry level hardware. The Talos Principle 2 is a great example to use for upscaling because of its high level of detail and its use of the latest upscaling technologies, DLSS 3.5.10 in this case. When looking at this foliage heavy test scene, you can clearly see the reduction in image quality when using DLSS quality mode instead of native rendering with TAA. The palm tree in the sky sizzles significantly more in the DLSS image, and the quality of grass is reduced with more sizzling and a lower resolution appearance. While sharpness is quite well matched standing still, the DLSS image becomes softer in motion. However, in this second scene, you can see that the native image struggles with the great element in the distance. DLSS quality mode is a lot more stable for that particular item, although the issues with foliage described earlier also apply. So like in some of the other games I've assessed, the overall stability of the image at 1080p can differ between techniques depending on where you're looking at, and it may be a personal preference thing as to which issues you'd rather have. Final game I'm looking at today is Assassin's Creed Mirage, which uses the oldest DLSS version of the games tested, 2.3.1, despite being a more recent release. This is a title where DLSS and native resolution look pretty similar when stationary in terms of softness and detail, but native rendering has a big advantage in motion, as DLSS quality mode becomes notably softer and less detailed. This means that as you play the game, the apparent resolution of native rendering is higher, and you can tell DLSS is utilizing data from a low render resolution. With that said, there are some areas where DLSS performs well, like in its image stability, during the synchronization move at the start of this sequence, DLSS did a better job of keeping fine detailed elements like mesh and fencing great stable. Like the Talos Principle 2 though, there are times where the DLSS image has less stability around foliage, so once again, it depends exactly where you look as to whether DLSS has an advantage in stability. Typically, in this title, due to the reduction in detail, even when adjusting sharpening settings, I preferred to use native rendering at 1080p. Of course, image quality is only one part of the story here. DLSS is generally used to improve performance. So for benchmarking at 1080p, I decided to test with an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 12GB, a card that has mainstream levels of performance and is generally suited to ultra setting gaming at 1080p. With its 12GB of VRAM, it rarely runs into VRAM issues at 1080p, and I paired it with a Ryzen 7 7800X3D to prevent CPU limits as well as 32GB of DDR5 6000 CL30 memory. All games have been tested using ultra or maximum settings, typically with ray tracing disabled, although I left RT on for Dead Space and Miles Morales. In most of the titles tested using ultra type settings, the RTX 3060 is around a 50 to 70 FPS sort of card at 1080p using native rendering. A little faster for Modern Warfare 3 using ultra, a little slower playing Starfield using ultra settings. With DLSS set to the quality mode, the RTX 3060 becomes more of a 70 to 90 FPS card. For example, Cyberpunk 2077, that ran the Ultra preset at 54 FPS in our test area, improved to 69 FPS on average using DLSS quality. Ratchet and Clank, that ran at 72 FPS using native rendering, improved to 96 FPS using DLSS quality. In both circumstances, the uplift was around 30%. There are some outliers though, Dead Space saw a huge 59% performance uplift using DLSS quality, and Star Wars Jedi Survivor also surpassed the 50% performance uplift barrier when using upscaling. 
On the other end, Assassin's Creed Mirage only saw a 16% performance improvement from DLSS quality, and Starfield saw just a 25% improvement. On average though, DLSS quality across these 10 games delivered a 36% performance improvement compared to native rendering at 1080p on the RTX 3060, gaming using ultra settings when looking at average FPS, along with a 32% improvement to 1% lows. Using this average number, it means a given game that runs at 60 FPS using native rendering improves to 82 FPS using DLSS quality. If the baseline performance is 40 FPS, performance would end up around 54 FPS with DLSS. Of course, there will be differences from game to game, but that's just an idea of how the average performance improvement translates to common gaming scenarios where someone would be assessing the value of DLSS. Having now gamed using DLSS at 1080p extensively across 10 titles, my opinion hasn't changed all that much compared to when I tried upscaling for the first time at this resolution. DLSS is far less effective at 1080p compared to 1440p or 4K, the simple reality of how upscaling at this resolution uses a very low render resolution. The DLSS quality mode used throughout this video is rendering the game at just 720p before upscaling to 1080p. That's not a lot of pixel data the algorithm has access to. Back when I tested DLSS in 26 titles at 4K and 1440p, I thought DLSS produced better or similar image quality to native relatively often. At 4K using the quality mode, I thought 10 games looked better using DLSS, 4 games were tied, and 10 games were better using native rendering. At 1440p using the quality mode, 10 games were better using DLSS, 5 games were tied, and 9 games were better using native rendering. So only about 36% of the time I thought using native rendering was better, and on some of those occasions native was only slightly better. At 1080p with a sample size of 10 games, I thought that native rendering was better most of the time. DLSS was only able to produce an image similar to native in three titles, although one of those was Jedi Survivor where both DLSS and native looked pretty bad. For the other games it ranges from, yeah native rendering is clearly better, to DLSS is usable but somewhat worse than native. And this was using the highest DLSS upscaled setting available, the quality mode, with six titles using the newest DLSS 3.5 versions, and a further two using DLSS 3.1. The big themes to come out of this testing are issues we talked about before using DLSS at 1080p. In some titles, DLSS produces a noticeably blurrier image in motion, with less detail and a softer image even after matching the sharpness to native rendering in static scenes. Using DLSS at 1080p is also much more likely to produce typical upscaling artifacts like shimmering, sizzling, ghosting, and poor image stability, artifacts that are either significantly minimized or not present at all using DLSS at, for example, 4K using the quality mode. However, there were also instances where DLSS improved image stability relative to native rendering and TAA. In some games, like Hogwarts Legacy, this made DLSS worth using as its image quality was similar to native. In other titles, improved image stability was only the case for some elements, and at other times TAA would be more stable. I ended up having mixed feelings on DLSS at 1080p because the performance uplift is decent. Across these games, 36% on average relative to native using a mainstream RTX 3060. For those with lower tier hardware, that's not too shabby at all, especially if you don't mind the reduced image quality. I think it's generally a case-by-case -case basis. Some games DLSS is going to be a great choice as the image quality hit isn't too bad for the performance uplift it provides. In other titles, it's really not worth getting such a boost when you have to introduce a blurrier or less stable presentation. What compounds this is that 1080p itself isn't an especially high resolution, so losing a bit of detail and introducing a few artifacts is a bigger deal than at 4K where the image quality is far superior and can withstand a small hit. It really sucks when an image that already lacks fine image detail is made blurrier with upscaling, and this is an issue some people have been complaining about with native TAA, let alone upscaling. When you play at 1440p or higher, it's easy to forget how bad some of these games look even at native 1080p using the highest settings. It feels very neglected from an optimization and image quality perspective. Anyway, in an upcoming video, I'll add FSR and XSS into this discussion to see how other upscalers fare at 1080p, and let me know in the comments below if you want to see the performance mode using these upscalers at 1080p. I'm not sure whether anyone actually uses such a low setting at 1080p, but hey, Maybe you want to see me rant about how bad it looks because it's really not great. Anyway, 
that's it for this one. If you appreciate our testing and analysis of things like that, you know what to do. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and consider supporting us via Patreon or Floatplane. Links are in the description below, and you'll gain access to some cool benefits and perks like our Discord community, monthly live streams, and BTS videos. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.